Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to build an Ethereum wallet with JavaScript. Okay, so before we get into all that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, then you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So first, let's just define Ethereum wallet and like why you might want to build one, okay? So it can mean a lot of different things. I want to clarify the terms. So you might be thinking like an Ethereum wallet, uh, like an iOS app or an Android app, a mobile app of some kind where you can, you know, uh, store Ether and send it, a cryptocurrency wallet basically, right? That is one type of Ethereum wallet, right? There's like an Ethereum wallet from the programming sense of just like, uh, a, kind, a, a structure that holds multiple accounts. That's also a wallet. Um, there's wallet interfaces on the web, all kinds of stuff, all right? So I'm gonna show you the tools that you can use in JavaScript to build all these types of things today. Okay, so let's jump in and get started. In order to build the Web3.js wallet with JavaScript, you're gonna wanna use the Web3.js library. So I've done several videos on Web3.js, so you can uh, check those out if you haven't already. And just head on over to web3.js.readthedocs.io to get started. All right, you also want to have Web3.js installed on your computer. Um, you can do that with Node Package Manager with uh, just npm install uh, Web3, all right? And you're going to need to check the current version to make sure it's compatible with the examples I'm showing you today. I'm looking at version 1.0 right now, so you just want to download some uh, stable release of version 1.0, okay? All right, so let's talk about the tools that you can use inside of Web3.js to build an Ethereum wallet, all right? So the first thing you need is an account, okay? And the first uh, tool that Web3 gives you is the ability to create an account, right? So you can see web3.eth.accounts.create. You can do this in your terminal. Uh, let's go ahead and open the Node console. So I'll say uh, Node. Once you've got Web3 installed, I'm going to require uh, Web3. And I'm going to go ahead and assign it to a variable. So I'll say uh, Web3 equals require Web3. All right. And that's just uh, our library import. So now I want to essentially assign a new Web3 instance like this, say Web3 equals uh, new Web3. Okay, and I'm not gonna pass in any uh, uh, Ethereum node connection or anything like that. If you watch my other previous videos, you know, this isn't really going to be connected to the blockchain. I do that in the other videos where I pass in like a, a web, uh, sorry, a Infura node uh, or any kind of Ethereum node connection here. We're just going to skip that for now because all we're going to work on uh, is the account creation, which is handled natively inside of the Web3 library. So, uh, all right. So now we have our instance of Web3 and I'm going to do this. So Web3 ETH accounts create, Web3 ETH accounts create, all right? And there you go. So this creates a new account. You can see the address, the private key, and we've got um, you know some other uh, functions that come back like sign transaction, sign encrypt. So first and foremost, don't use this account, right? I've exposed this private key on my screen here, and it's unsafe for anyone to use this account for uh, you know real purposes. Like, do not store any funds in this because everyone watching this video is going to know it, um, and you don't want to have those funds compromised. So, quick warning. All right. So that leaves me to my next point. So this is your way to um, you know, create the account. And this private key is very sensitive, right? You don't want to be showing this private key to anyone. You don't want to store this private key inside of a database as is, right? If you're going to create a wallet of some kind, whether it's a web wallet, whether it's a mobile wallet, whatever, um, you don't want this sensitive data to be sitting on a server or on a device just like it is, OK? So let's look at how you might address that, OK, if you're building an Ethereum wallet. So let's see here. Uh, what you want to do is look at this next function called uh, encrypt, all right? So this allows you to encrypt the account with a password. So if you're going to create a wallet, what you could essentially do is allow someone to create an account of some kind, whether it's you know associated with an email address or not. You know, it just depends on how decentralized your users want your application to be, or how much data they want you to actually collect. But you could uh, essentially, um, you know ask for a password from the user, okay, to, to lock their wallet. And this will encrypt the uh, private key into this um, format right here, okay. And what this allows you to do is, this is a lot like the JSON key store files that you might have seen if you've ever worked with Geth, right. Basically, it's going to allow you to store an encrypted version of the private key that can then be decrypted with the same password that was used to encrypt it, all right? And this is something that's much safer to store, like, on a device or on a server somewhere, um, 
Now, there's lots of mixed opinions about this, but if you're going to do it, this is going to be one of your safest or safer ways to do it, okay? So I'll just show you how to do that right now, all right? So let's see, um, we'll encrypt it like this. We'll go ahead and say uh, Web3, let's look at the function name here. So this is Web3 ETH accounts encrypt, Web3 ETH accounts encrypt. And let's pass in the uh, account and then a password. All right, so it's two, two function arguments. So private key, sorry, sorry, the private key. So we'll uh, copy that like this, I'm gonna click copy and I'm gonna paste it in here. So here's the private key and here's the password. We'll just call the password foobar for now, all right? And there you go. So here is the uh, format that is safe to store. So you could put this in a database, you could put it on your device of some kind, you know, however you're gonna build your wallet, this is uh, a much better way than just storing this. Basically the problem is if somebody hacked your database, you could see that. It's kind of like storing a password in a database now, you know, you store encrypted versions of passwords and you compare the hashes whenever you authenticate users. It's the same kind of thing, like you don't want your, you know, passwords sitting on somebody's WordPress website or something like that because they're super vulnerable to attacks um, and they could, you know, if you use the same password, password for your email, it's, it's, you know, it's just all kinds of problems. So that's how you'd encrypt the account. You would store this information uh, for the user to be able to, you know, log in. All right. So let's look at uh, how to decrypt that as well. So basically we can just reverse it like this. Um, so let's store this to a variable. Uh, let's say JSON. Okay. And now we can say web3 ETH accounts decrypt, and then we'll just pass in the uh, key store, son, and then we'll pass in the password as well, foobar, all right, and there you go. That's your account representation, just like we saw whenever we did uh, Web3 ETH accounts create, all right? So they get your account back to the, um, you know, back to the uh, format it was whenever you created it. And that's a much safer way to store it in your wallet. And now, um, if you're gonna build something like an Ethereum wallet, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. So if you want to build a basic wallet, like uh, a web interface, if you're building a new cryptocurrency and you want to have a web interface, or you have a mobile app uh, that where you can store multiple Ethereum tokens or your own cryptocurrency or something like that, um, you might want to just be able to send transactions, right? And you can do that with uh, some of my other videos, which I've talked about where I show you how to essentially like you know, uh, send transactions, you can do sign transaction right here, right? So, um, Web3 ETH accounts sign transaction and you can build the transaction. You can t talk about how many, uh, you know, Ether you want to send from one account to another. If you have your own uh, cryptocurrency with an ERC20 token or something like that, you, you would uh, put all the transaction information for the smart contract function to uh, send that cryptocurrency as well. In the case of an ERC-20 token, it would be the transfer function, okay? Um, all right, so check out previous videos in the Web3 series to look at that, because I've covered that in quite uh, extensive detail. I go through all that step by step, okay? So let's also look at uh, some other things you can do with this while you're here, right? So you can... Um, also work with wallets as a construct, a programming construct. And that's something I mentioned at the beginning of this video, okay? So wallet means a lot of different things. It can mean like a, a web wallet, like I talked about, or a mobile wallet. It can also just mean uh, like an Ethereum wallet as a, like a programming construct where, uh, or an Ethereum construct, I should say. I may not be using the best definition here, but I'll try to illustrate what I'm talking about. So essentially, like when we created an account here, uh, we just created a new account, right? So a wallet is kind of, I'm sorry, an account is sort of like your uh, individual user on the blockchain, right? It's sort of like your username and password is kind of like your public key and private key or your address and your private key. A wallet is basically something that holds multiple accounts, right? And uh, you can create new wallets to hold multiple accounts like this. So I'll just demonstrate that here. Uh, Web3 ETH wallets, oh, sorry, accounts wallet create all right and here's a new wallet okay and it's got multiple accounts inside of it and you can see that looks a lot like the account that we created in the last uh episode sorry the last example and this is a way that you can also 
this is something else that you can do if you're going to build an Ethereum wallet is is build a wallet for the user, not just a single account. All right. So if you ever use something like MetaMask, this is a good example uh, of something where you know you can store multiple accounts inside of here, and it's an application that runs in your browser. Um, yeah, so this this allows you to have multiple accounts, which a lot of Ethereum wallets do. And you might want to look at something like this rather than try to manage each, you know, account yourself, right? And this is something that can be, um, you know, specified with a recovery seed phrase and all that kind of stuff, right? So you can also tell it how many accounts you want to create whenever you uh, create the wallet. So we could say uh, ten, right? And this would create a whole bunch of new accounts. Boom, right? So you could do it with one or two, something like that, right? And you can also encrypt the wallet just like you did with the uh, account, right? So you can do Web3 Accounts Wallet Encrypt. Web3 ETH Accounts Wallet uh, Encrypt. And we can say uh, FUBAR, right? So let's see, I don't think that's all of the... Uh, yeah, let's try. All right, so there's your encrypted version, all right? And you can also do it with um, decrypt as well, right? So we can give this the, you can sign this to a variable. We can just say uh, key store. All right, and we can decrypt it like this Web3 ETH accounts wallet decrypt. Web3 ETH accounts wallet decrypt. And pass in the key store and the password foobar. All right, there you go. There's your wallet back in action. And you can you know, use this wallet to assign any number of transactions that you want to, to send cryptocurrency, to interact with smart contracts. I mean, you could even theoretically build dApps that don't require you to use MetaMask, right? So if you're going to um, you know, do this on a server or something like that, um, I'm going to make another video about that where you can do it in Python, okay? So that's going to be the topic of the next video where I talk about how to, you know, potentially build blockchain applications without MetaMask in Python with Web3, okay? Um, and that's a way that you can store private keys locally with that um, key store file. And I thought about creating a new series on how to create an Ethereum wallet. So if y'all are interested in that, just leave a comment down below. Um, you know, it'd be a multi-step series, uh, step by step i'd show you everything about how to do it in javascript create a web application all that kind of stuff so if y'all are interested leave a comment down below all right so that's all i got for today guys that's some tools that you can use to build an ethereum wallet hope that gets you started like i said i might be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a wallet from start to finish so if you're interested just leave a comment down below um yeah and always um you know, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found. And also, if you want to learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.